There's no reason why these fish shouldn't be biting, but this is fit. Oh, it's gonna be the biggest one of the day. Oh, he's on there. I got him. Welcome back, y'all. So before we get into the video today, I got a product in the mail here we're gonna take a look at. Now, normally I don't do product reviews or sponsorship type stuff, but this is something I felt like a lot of people could use. This is a boat cover. It's pretty inexpensive. They sell it on Amazon and they have supplied a coupon code for you guys to use. And at the end of the day, boat covers are pretty important because you know, we spend a ton of money on our boats and the sun and the rain can destroy them. So let's get this opened up and take a look at it here. Now, I've actually had this for a while, but I'm just now getting around to opening it up. It's supposed to fit a, a 17 to a 19 foot boat, which my boat's about uh, just a little, just a couple inches under 19 foot. So it looks like this is probably the engine cover. All right, so the first thing I noticed, it is pretty heavy. Uh, the seams look good. It feels pretty durable. Of course, I can't speak on how long it's going to last because I'm just now opening it up myself. But uh, we're going to get it on the boat now and see how it'll fit. So as you guys can tell, we did get it on the boat. It does fit as I expected. The rod rack did interfere with it a little bit, but it's still covering the entire boat. And I think this particular cover is just a little over $100. And I got to say, I'm pretty impressed with what you get here for $100. It seems like it's really good quality. It fits good. And what I really like about it is these tie downs, the way they work. You just wrap this end around the trailer and then you clip it in here. This is attached to the cover. You just clip it in and pull that down tight. It's a lot easier than dealing with a ratchet strap or a bungee cord. I want to thank the company Umbrado that sent this cover over and let me check it out. If you guys are interested in wanting to fit your boat, I'll put an Amazon link in the description on where you can find it. And there'll also be a 5% discount code. But let's get on into today's video. This is the McAlphin Locks and Dam 10 a.m. recording for Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. The upper gauge is 12.7. The lower gauge is 19.9 running 37 feet on the dam with eight hydro units running all right we should be good all right y'all we're headed to the falls of the ohio today on the ohio river to try to catch some big blue cats so stay tuned we're gonna have some fun today So we brought some frozen skipjack with us today, but I always like to try to get fresh ones if I can. So we're just hitting a few places on the way to the dam that I've caught skipjack in the past. And to catch these skipjack, I'm just using basically little crappie jigs. I got some chrome flash on them. Uh, these are actually some little hand tied jigs that I made myself. They got really strong hooks on them that won't bend when you catch a three pound skipjack. So we're just gonna cast these around, see if we can catch a few. That's a better one, isn't it? A little bit better. All right, not bad. That's a good size to cut in half. Get him on ice. All right, so we got a few, but they're pretty scattered out. So we're gonna move on up to the dam, see what we can get into up there. All right, so we're tying up some bumping rigs. They're moving quite a bit of water through here today. That's the way we're gonna start out fishing. If that doesn't work, we'll, we might anchor up later. I brought some anchoring rods with us. Water temperature is 62 and a half degrees. 
Well, the fishing should be really good, but it has been tough up here lately. They just had a big tournament up here and the weights were really low. And we came up here last week and we, we caught some fish, but we struggled all day. So hopefully that's gonna change today. Hopefully the fish are biting. Uh, I can't imagine why they wouldn't be. The river looks great. You know, it's right here at the middle of May. Everything should be biting. All right, so I've explained it on here a few times before, but if you've never seen anybody do any bumping for catfish, basically we're gonna be fishing with one rod in our hand. The boat's gonna be drifting. We're gonna be bouncing this weight and this bait off the bottom. You can catch catfish doing this when they won't bite anything else. I think it's got a lot to do with that sinker bumping off the bottom, creating vibrations that the fish pick up in their lateral line. The current's about three mile an hour today. We're gonna to be aiming the trolling motor up river and run it on about half speed to slow the boat down some. A graphite rod is recommended for doing this because you can stay in contact and feel the bottom better, but it's not something you have to have to get started. One thing I would recommend is use braided line because braided line is more important to me than the graphite rod. It's gonna help you be able to feel the bottom a lot better. So I've got 65 pound braid on here, eight strand. I like the eight strand over the four just because it's smoother and creates less drag in the water. I've got a three-way crane swivel tied onto the braid and coming off that, I've got 60 pound monofilament going to my hook. That's an eight alt circle hook. It's all tangled up here. Oh, mess. And uh, coming off the other side of the swivel, I've got 25 pound monofilament going to my sinker. That way if the sinker gets hung up, I can pop that lighter pound test and get the rest of my rig back. All right, so we got our trolling motor on six and it looks like we're drifting at about the right speed. Some people like to cast their baits out when they're doing this and that's fine. I just prefer to drop mine over the side of the boat, just less of a chance of it getting tangled. And then we're just gonna drop it to the bottom until we feel the bump. And that's all there is to it. Now, sometimes you'll have to turn your trolling motor up or down, depending on depth of water. You might have to lighten your weight up, but uh, we're going over a little drop off right here. It goes from 20 foot down into about a 50 foot hole. Perfect current speed, everything's just right. This first drift is gonna tell me a lot. If we don't get bit on this first drift, I'd say it's gonna be a tough day. There's no reason why these fish shouldn't be biting, but this is fit. Oh, there he, there he was already. Oh, he's on there, I got him. Okay, the fish are biting. It'll be all information we need. Yeah. That was literally what, just maybe a minute or two from the time it I dropped the bait. No, it wasn't even a minute. Now this is gonna be a small fish. He's actually bigger than I thought he was. He's wrapped up so he couldn't fight. He's still got all his power. Gotta get my skipjack head back. Don't have many fresh ones today. There's what he ate. First one of the day, not a giant, but a healthy fish. Probably about six pounds. Now you would think fishing multiple rods would be better than fishing one rod for catfish, but that's not always the case. Normally when they won't bite anything else, you can get them to bite bumping. So let's uh, get that head tied back on, drop another bait now. He's in that current. You don't know how big they are when they do that. He's pulling back some. It's gonna be the biggest one of the day. Man, he hit it and took off down the river. Flying, about broke my arm. That's what we want though. We want them to be aggressive. Yeah, he's definitely bigger than the other two we caught. Have you seen him yet? No, but he's bigger. Oh yeah, he's a nice fish. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no wonder he pulled so hard. That's a 20 plus, isn't it? Yeah. 20 at least. Look how much mud all these fish have got on them. I got him. We just gotta pay attention, not wreck, because we're moving about five mile an hour. Yeah. Can't even move.
Yeah, that leader's definitely gonna have to be retied after that one. That's a dang good fish right there. All those fish I've caught have been on that same head. All right, so I got the boat spot locked right here. I'm gonna weigh him for you guys. I know a lot of people like to see how much they weigh. It's hard to tell on the camera whether a fish is 10 pounds or 30 pounds sometimes. All right, he's 26 in the net, so he's a 23 pounder. All right, y'all, what a great fish. Anytime you can come out and catch a fish like that, it's been a good day. He was 26 in the net, so he's right at 23 pounds. He's been out for a minute, so I'm gonna go ahead and get him back in. He's ready to go back, he's gone. All right, well, we pulled up here to the hydros and made a couple drifts and we've caught a fish each drift, so. We're gonna put some fresh bait down, see what else is down there. I need some bait. Get up, I know it's hard on an open man like you. Fresh or what? Yeah. Is this fresh? Mm hmm Back off the oh, I killed the trolling motor. You want to fight this one, Landon? Nah. Why? You gonna catch it on? Mm -hmm. oh. You'll get him. They're biting decent. Not great, but they're biting. I'm not feeling a lot of shaking, so that's good. But we're drifting to him because we're drifting at four mile an hour right now in this canal. I caught this fish basically because I was being lazy. We fished our spot up here at the dam and I just kept on drifting because I was comfortable sitting on that cooler. The sun was shining on me. Uh, he's not a giant, but a, a nice looking fish. Not a giant, but a solid fish. Just a good looking fish. Belly's full, pretty female. All right, buddy. He still got, or she still got some air coming out of her. I don't think she's so full of air that she can't get back down. Oh, no, straight back down, she's good. You can normally always catch a couple smaller fish down here by the locks, but we have hooked a couple giants here as well. All right, Landon, let's get you baited up. You gotta get you on a fish. So if you've never been up here to the falls of the Ohio before, it's pretty unique. There's actually a, a lower dam here, and then you got the hydros over here, and about a half mile up that way, closer to town, you've got an upper dam. But about a month and a half ago, they had a few barges get loose up river when the river was all blown out and flooded, and they ended up getting hung up in these lower gates. Now, one of the barges was a tanker, and it was full of methanol, and then the other two barges were grain barges. One of them had corn, and one of them had beans, I think. The other day when we were struggling to catch fish, we were joking that all those barges that uh, crashed dumped all that corn and soy in the river and the fish were eating that. They didn't want our skipjack. I was said that just joking. Well, we catch a little 10 pounder and sure enough, as we're unhooking it, it spits up a bunch of corn in the bottom of the boat. And there's no telling how much corn is hung up in these eddies and stuff around here. So the fish are probably definitely taking advantage of it, but hopefully we can find a big one today that would rather eat skipjack than corn. Tell you what, out here where I think all the big fish should be, we can only catch small ones. I don't know where all the big ones are at. He ain't bad. I mean, they're not bad fish, but it's springtime. We ought to be catching big fish up here in this kind of in these kind of river conditions. Yeah, he's a little better. Nothing wrong with a fish like that. 
there was a time in my life where a fish like that, I wouldn't have been able to sleep for a week if I caught that. So, got to remember that. Those big ones are fun, but can't catch them every day. That's a nice fish right there. We pretty much covered everything we can cover down here. We could go fish the other dam, but I know there's a couple guys fishing up there, and it's pretty tight up there. There's basically one little area everybody fishes, so we'll let them guys have it. We'll keep drifting. And uh, I'd say here in about 30 minutes, we're gonna find us a spot to anchor up and just relax for a while. And uh, got our fingers crossed for that big boy. All right, so we're gonna do a little anchor fishing, actually spot lock fishing. We're uh, got the trolling motor down, spot locked right up here pretty close to the dam and we got a deep hole behind us about 50 foot so we caught a lot of big fish here in the past we're not going to spend a lot of time here but we're going to throw four pieces of cut skipjack down there and see what happens i really don't even want to tell y'all how old this line how old these rigs are on here if we hook a monster we might be in trouble All right, y'all, so I think we're gonna go ahead and call it a day. Uh, the sun's starting to set and we just can't seem to make these fish bite anchor. We were planning on staying a little longer tonight, but I don't think there's any reason to. But we caught several nice fish bumping, one really nice fish. I think the bite's definitely getting better from what it was last week. So we'll be back up here real soon and we'll have another video for you guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I wanna thank you all for watching. God bless. We'll see you in the next one.